Hello, I'm Katie McLean, and my movie is Seeing is Believing Women Direct. Well, let's talk about <laughs> Women Direct. I kind of want to start with the fact that the Oscars did a good thing this year with Greta Gerwig. Right. And, um, Let's talk about recognition of directors and, and, and female directors. We just finished with Catherine. She's also directed her first feature. Yeah. Um, how important is it for people to see people on the big stage, you know, where women are being respected for what they do on behind the scenes? Well, one of the motivators for my doing this was, uh, I'll tell you a little story. I went to a film festival, uh, and I had done, I directed a short film, and they gave me my credentials, and it didn't have director on it. It had producer, and it had writer, but it didn't have director on it. I said, I'm the director, too, and she looked at me, and she was like, she wouldn't give me, <laughs> she didn't believe me. So I was just sort of dumbfounded. Like, how is this possible that you look at this and you don't see director? And I realized that throughout our history, certainly, and more, at least the last 50, 60, 70 years, um, it's been mostly men directing films. And so there's been this sort of, I think, common misconception that only men can direct films. And what that leads to is an idea that only men can be this combination of visionary and leader. And that's a, a, a misconception that I want to change because women can be artists, right? Painters, that's a visionary and sometimes you have to lead because you're selling your art, right? Or writers, that's a, being a visionary, you have an idea, you write your thing and then you have to sell it or communicate with other people. But directing is leading a team, right? And I think there's resistance to seeing women in that leadership role of leading a team, leading others, perhaps leading men. And that's the part that I think um, is the is the sticking part for a lot of people. Like some men may be like, I'm not going to take a orders from a woman. You know, what does that mean about me? And I was like, well, it means you don't understand the dynamic of what this is and what creating a film is. Is um, it's about teamwork. And the, the leader of that particular team is supposed to inspire their team members to get the best out of them, right? So when a leader does a sort of old-fashioned top-down, this is the way I want it, you just do it, um, that can not always inspire that person to bring their best. Sometimes like, well, either it'll be I'll show them, I'll prove myself to them, or um, eh, screw him, I'm not going to give them my best, right? So. What I find many women directors um, are particularly good at is because we're really great listeners a lot of the times. Um, men can be great listeners too, but uh, women tend to really be like, oh, that I didn't communicate that what I need to you. Let me communicate that better. And like, did, did you hear what I need? Okay, great. Now let's, let's do that. So they're both kind of encouraging and like really good listeners and really help to inspire the getting the best out of other people. And I think that's a good leadership skill that men could benefit from, that anyone who wants to be a leader in a creative team could benefit from. Was there a particular woman director you came across that inspired you to look into this or was it just a lack thereof around you that you saw and you thought, I have to do something to change what I'm seeing, which is an unequal representation? Um, I think it was a really uh, a combination of things. One, um, I had when I was younger, I didn't even consider film directing as something that I could do because I was female. Wow. Until I saw a movie by Sally Potter okay. called Orlando. Yeah. And it was just a revelation to me that such a beautiful film about such a complex topic done so poetically had been done by this sort of, you know, kind of average looking, you know, kind of very British uh, um, middle class woman. It had nothing to do with her education or her class, the class system, how what kind of family she was brought into. She had a concept, she had an idea, she drove that concept forward, and she made a, a huge studio film. The other one was um, Mary Heron's uh, American Psycho, yeah, yeah. and it was always that same thing of like, a woman directed that? Or Catherine Bigelow, like Hurt Locker, a woman directed that? And it, it, I had to like go through an education in my own kind of mind and, and self, thinking like, well, why wouldn't a woman be able to direct that? I mean, that's why. What what kind of concepts do I have that I think I can't do that because I'm female? 
that's very, that's really weird. I need to confront that in myself. So once I started confronting that and, and talking to women and, and, and listening to how they, how they created, why they created, how they came to become directors, I was like, oh man. And, and not only that, but I started directing short films myself. I decided like this is the best job ever. This is an amazing job uh, to be able to do. This is a, it's just wonderful. Anybody and I want anybody who thinks they might want to do it to at least try, whether they're male or female, you know. But certainly, if they're female uh, or gender identify as female, that I want them to think that they can that they can do it. You utilized Indigo Go Go for the start of it. But as far as getting people to, to interview, how did that order come about? How did that structure, where did, where did that come from? It was really funny. I, um, I decided to look at uh, who had directed me, like what women have directed me, you know, and things, because I was an actor for a really long time. And um, I could only think of a few, but I started with them. And uh, one of them was a stage manager on All My Children, uh, who I had gone to see her theatrical production of a beautiful Japanese piece. And I was like, this is the great, I mean, it was just mine, just blown away by how beautiful it was. And this little tiny uh, woman who, you know, would call us, you know, call our cues on, on set had created this magical world. So I started with, with her and I think she was the very first person I directed and then, or interviewed, and then people started recommending me. So one woman would recommend another woman. So uh, Kimberly McCullough, who's on General Hospital, I interviewed her and she's like, okay, you need to interview Leslie Linka Gladder. Leslie Linka Gladder said, okay, that was a really great interview and she recommended me to Joanna Kearns. Joanna Kearns recommended me to Bethany Rooney. Bethany Rooney recommended me to like John Wells. It was kind of like that. Now, maybe not exactly, but it was, exactly, it was one woman to another to another to another and that's kind of how it, it rolled out. And then my husband too, he's a filmmaker and he was like, hey, I'd been at this film festival and I met these women, you should talk to these women. So I met Mira Men on that way, and Nicole Gomez Fisher that way, and um, and on and on and on like that. You know, one of the, I mean, with your history in acting, I mean, you've been acting since you were a little kid. Um, how has that helped you now behind the scenes as a director, knowing what's on the other side almost instinctively? Mm. It's probably my favorite part is to help actors do great work and to be able to let them know that I see exactly what they're doing and I can do things like, like this, like be like, this, no, this, good, this, good, this, no. And they understand that or um, like shorthand communication, like I have, we have a simpatico because I understand exactly what they're going through. If they're nervous, you know, I can talk them down. If they're not nervous enough, I can talk them up. You know, it's, it's the best. I, it's, you know, and then I always tell them, like, I want to make you look good, right? I don't want you, to, I want you to act well, but I also want you to feel confident that you're going to look as, as great as I can make you look um, in front of the camera. And that, I think, helps settle them down, too, and focus on their work as well. So it's fun. It's, it's one of the best parts. <laughs> You know, when I interviewed Melanie, um, before the festival starts, we always do kind of a phoner before we come down from Dallas. And yeah. one of the first things she brought up was your film and the panel. Oh, oh cool. And how proud she is that this is kind of a theme of this year's is women filmmakers. What does it mean to... Your film's not just a film here at a festival. I feel like it's much bigger. It's much more. It's going to cause discussion and talks. And the panel, even bigger than that, I think, that's got to be... I don't know, refreshing to have a film that has so much appeal outside of just watching the film. Mm, yeah, I, it's a lot of people say to me like, oh, this film is a conversation piece. And, uh, and I like that. If there's something that we just touch on lightly in the film that people want to go out and talk, have a group, you know, get together and talk about that one thing, great. And I'm all for that. It's, it's terrific. It's the whole point, right? It's like to get people talking about this, questioning their preconceptions, biases. Um, there's things like, you know, what do they call it? Passive bias, which is like, oh, I didn't even know that I had that, you know, inside myself, like a limited idea of, of what women can do. Like, as a female, like, I how could I have that right but I did and so and that's okay and we can evolve and grow together I and mean, that's really the whole point like I, I made this to help our culture evolve and grow and and if it helps it just like a little bit or if it helps just a couple women I'm like boom over the moon if it helps a lot of people tumbling somersaults <laughs> of happiness yeah for sure
You know, you've done a, an amazing job of creating a 30-minute version or just under mm. uh, under 60. The capabilities of taking this, not just to, to film, but educational use um, outside of uh, the film world, that's maybe opening doors. How, how important is that part of the process? Like, you can expand this even further. Yeah, well, we have a 30-minute version, we have a 60-minute version, and I just cut a 90-minute version. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, we definitely are starting to reach out to colleges. We're going to be screening at Pepperdine at the end of March. Um, I've done uh, screenings at um, JCCC in Kansas City, and it's great. I mean, I'm I'm thrilled to be able to bring this to to students and colleges and organizations. Some corporations have been reaching out to me saying like, oh, we, some parts of this we would really love to show to our, you know, our group. Uh, the people that we that work at in our organizations, you know, to to bring out a broader conversation about this topic. So it makes me really happy. Yeah. I feel like this is can can keep going as far as a film. Like it never dies. It's it's a baby that's growing. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you ever feel like you're ever going to give this project up? I mean, is it always going to sort of have a tinge of life to it? That's that's got to be unique. Uh, I definitely feel like the the film has a as a long life in me as a creator. A part of that is because, and I, I realized this recently, my mom was a, an artist who felt like she would never get work after she was 40, who felt like she would never be seen. Um, she had an enormous amount of um, uh, pushback from her family, uh, particularly her dad, um, about who she wanted to be as, a, as an artistic person. And then I think also she embraced certain things from culture that's that about who she could and who she couldn't be, and being the daughter of that, a woman, being the daughter of a woman who, ex, who allowed herself to be limited, has it's like it's infected me in a way that I'm like that cannot happen to anybody else ever or to me, and uh, I feel like I've sort of it, 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 it's it's like a, a sickness that not only to help myself overcome that I sort of have to help a hundred thousand other people overcome at the same time because it's so big you know for me to be able to move in the world as an individual as a female with these new concepts I need to have at least a thousand to two thousand to five thousand other women feeling the same way and acting the same way so that we can be accepted and so I can be accepted you know so that I can change the paradigm that my mother grew up in Wow. yeah um, where can we find more information about the film? How can we follow you? Yeah. Um, how can people get attached to this? Um, I would love it if people would go to the website, which is seeingisbelievingwomendirect.com. I know it's a really long website, but <laughs> 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 and uh, follow, you know, join the newsletter because we put out a regular newsletter so people can find out what's going on. Um, if you don't want to put your email out there, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Katie McLean. Katie spelled like lady, C-A-D-Y. Uh, or um, on Facebook, where um, Facebook backslash women directors so that's even easier so <laughs> yeah that would be three places where I am all the time well thank you Katie for the time thank oh. you for everything you've done thank, thank you. you so much thank you it's a pleasure